The Crate Phantom turns out to be quite a capable exploration ship, and today I'm going to show you how to outfit it. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get, so upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort worthy of the Imperial Cutter. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. So the Crate Phantom, very capable exploration ship, very decent jump range, and not too bad internal loadouts either. I'm going to run over a build I've made, but before we do it, I just quickly want to remind you that this is recorded on the beta server in the week 4 of the beta. So if any changes is made, any balance passes are made to the build, then keep in mind that there might be uh, there might be some slight alterations, and if they do some uh, some significant changes to it that requires changes to the build, I'll make sure to post that in a pinned comment. So go down to the comment section and uh, and have a look there. Um, so yeah, just a small disclaimer there. But let's dive right into the build. First of all, we're gonna have a look at the um, at the core internals. I think this is probably the uh, the most straightforward place. We're going to go with a 3A power plant, and this is engineered with overcharged, and we are going to go with thermal spread. Now, A-rated because we want that um, we want that heat efficiency, which is also why we've gone with thermal spread. You can go stripped down if you want to, but heat efficiency is definitely um, a thing you want. Overcharged, you can see here we're actually a little bit overpowered, but that's not too bad on the expiration ship. I'll show you that later on. Um, but this gives us significant power to make this ship work, and it's nice and light. Thrusters, 5D thrusters, um, and I believe these are set for, um, for dirty drive and then stripped down. Um, so again, I went with dirty drive to get that little bit extra maneuverability when we're flying, and then stripped down. You could go with clean drives if you really wanted to, but I don't know. I went dirty drive, stripped down. Um, frame shift drive, not a huge surprise here. Increase range and mass manager. Um, oh, I should say there will be a link uh, for Call the Oldest Build in the description as well. You can get that. Um, life support, also pretty straightforward, pretty standard. D-rated with lightweight on it. Um, power distributor 1D. And with a 1D, here's a little thing. 1D with an engine focused and super conduit. This means we can boost. We can boost on a 1D. Um, again, super conduit is not really necessary. I think you can go stripped down if you really want to uh, increase your range a little bit. But this thing is so light anyway, I think it's like half a ton that you don't really gain a lot. So I figured having that extra recharge so you could boost more often was more useful um, um, than having that like tiny, tiny increase in your jump range. So that's why I went with that. And again, sensors, no big uh, surprises here. Um, I've gone with a D-rated sensors with lightweight on them. A lot of people like to downgrade their fuel tanks. I've not done that. The, the ship does have a very, um, very respectable fuel tank and go quite far. So you can, if you really want to go for jump range, you can downgrade your fuel tank to a class four. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend going down much lower, but class four should definitely do it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a small, uh, small change you can make there. Um, I just quickly want to run over. Uh, the hard points, that we, the utility mount, then we're going to go to the optional tunnels. Now, hard point wise, I've gone for a single 1D mining laser for the sole purpose of if you're out exploring, you're out and you're far away from anything and you need materials and they may not be available in the, uh, on the planets in the system, it never hurts to have a mining laser on board. We can power it off. I mean, you can see it's two tons, so you could forfeit, you could remove this. It's two tons, we'll power it off, so don't use any power, and we can then power it on if we actually need it. So this is just like your extra security that you can get access to material, because it's much more common to find a ring planet than a landable planet. At least a landable planet with the um, with the materials you'll need. So can be a good idea to, uh, to bring a single mining laser just in case. For utilities, I've kind of gone with a... Um, uh, with a, I don't know what we're going to find kind of a, a approach to this. So heat sink, you know, just in case something happens, you begin to overheat, uh, you get caught too close to the star or something, you have a chance to uh, to launch one of those. Um, so I pretty much fitted as many scanners on here as I could, just because 
well, we never know what we're going to find. So a fit of the manifest scanner, a Sino scanner, and a frameshift wake scanner here. Um, these are, of course, optional. You don't need to bring these, but I don't know. I think it would be nice to at least have some scanners, especially the Sino scanner. If you come across anything alien out there, it might be nice to have. These can be engineered for lightweight, as far as I know, if I recall, if I recall correctly, they can be engineered for lightweight. So you could do that. That would save you. you see, these are all 1.3 tons each. So that would save you um, like three tons or something, I think. So you can save a little bit of mass here, increasing your jump rates as well. I haven't done that just because I didn't want to go too overboard with the engineering here. But again, these can be lightweighted if you really want to go, uh, go full on. And then finally, we're going to have a look at the optional internals. Now, starting at the top, 6A fuel scoop. That Makes sense, we want to be able to fuel scoop fairly quickly. Then a 5A auto field maintenance unit um, for repairs with the overheat, we take module damage, we want to be able to repair it. A Guardian FSD booster, um, give us that extra extra range. You can see our range down here at the bottom of the screen. It's actually pretty decent. We have a, when running on fumes, we are at uh, like 69.4, but in a fully fueled setup, we're running at about 65. So you would probably expect to jump around 65. Um, so again, very decent, um, very decent jump rates there. Then I have a 5D shield generator, and this I believe has gone for reinforced for that extra hit points and strip down just to get the mass of it down a little bit, just lose those 10% mass again to try and uh, conserve our jump range. Then I've gone with a 2G. Um, vehicle hanger, so we get our SRV. Um, again, we can power this off. Same with the uh, AFMU. Probably want that on just in case you want to use that in an emergency, but the planetary vehicle hanger, you can power that off and then power it on when you need it. And then I've left um, two empty compartments, which I'll come back to in a bit. And then, of course, a detailed surface scanner that I've engineered with the new expanded probe scanning radius. This is something that will be coming in this patch that increases, as you can see here, my probe scanning radius by, I think it got up to 50%. I didn't have the material for the last roll here, but it gives me those uh, those plus 30% that we need. Um, so, yeah. That just gives us a little bit more coverage with our probes when mapping planets, making it easier for us to get the efficiency bonus, in turn, giving us more money when we return and sell our exploration data. So, I think that's a, it's pretty much the only upgrade there is, so I see no reason not to do that. But as I said, we have these two optional shot slots here that we're not using. And these are really open and you can do with them what you want. You can leave them empty if you're running solo. If you're running in a uh, together with other people, it can be a good idea to go in and fit something like a fuel transfer limpet. If you're running solo, you might want to consider a, uh, a repair, where is it, a repair limpet, as you can see that one here. Uh, repair limits, I believe, can also repair yourself. But at least if you're flying in the fleet, ha having some either fuel transfer or repair limpets can be very useful to help your wingmates out. Um, if they get stuck, run out of fuel, or if the uh, hull is beginning to take too much damage, you can then repair each other's hull. Um, so that's also very useful. And, and of course, if we're bringing a repair limpet controller, or mini limpet controllers actually, we will need a cargo rack. So remember that, the goose last one. But you're actually free to use this for whatever you want. Uh, you can fix the fuel tanks if you really want to. You can fit some hulls. Plenty of options here for, um, for what you can do. Uh, extra AFMUs if you're really planning to go uh, out there for a very long time. That might be useful. Um, but yeah, these are really open to do with what you want. And uh, yeah, that's really up to you. So quickly want to show you here, you can see here right now, we are sitting at around 90% power usage. We wouldn't be able to turn on all our sensors and our mining lasers. You can see I have most of this stuff turned off. But if I need any of this stuff, let's say I need the planetary vehicle hangar, um, might actually have enough power to turn that on, on its own. I do. But if I need multiple modules here, what we can just do is we can just go in our consider turning off the AFMU because that takes up a lot of power and that gives us all the power we need to power on pretty much anything on our ship we want. Um, so you just need to cycle your modules. You can't have everything up at the same time, but that's pretty common on, uh, on long range builds. So you s save on your power plant that way. But anyway, um, 
that is the build. Again, here are the quick, uh, quick stats. You can also see the shield health. Not, of course, uh, amazing, but enough to take a bump when you're trying to land so you don't get hull damage. And that uh, beautiful jump range there. So, I, uh, I hope you liked this uh, video. If you did, give a like down below, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.